Timing underwater. Speed underwater. That is what half our assignments are about. Harris, are you listening to me? Yes, sir. Then bloody well look at me. Yes, sir. Yesterday, one man completed the exercise precisely on time. Me. Today, you will all complete the exercise precisely on time. You'll arrive at your first marker in exactly four and a half minutes from now. The second marker, 30 seconds later. Three, two, one, go! That's better. Next time, we'll make it more difficult. I shall expect to see a considerable improvement on the timing of yesterday's exercise, Harris. Now, you be a good girl, eh? Do you hear me, Harris? Yes, sir. Uh, Mr. Fletcher has a new job for us, then, sir. Presumably. Not this trip, Mary. You'll be staying at your club, as usual? The committee voted to admit females on the premises. I resigned. Will he be gone long, sir? A day, uh, well, maybe two. Goodbye, Enoch. I said not this trip. See, did I forget anything? Yes, I bloody well did. Remember, you are in charge, Harris. Yes, sir. And don't forget to feed my cats. Morning, Angus. Madam, 
this is a non-smoker, which is the reason that I, and undoubtedly this gentleman here, selected this carriage. This gentleman happens to be my husband, and he does not object to me smoking. Have you a first-class ticket? You're unusually dressed for a ticket collector. Aren't you going to clip it? You will find a smoker. A wise decision. Can't change a twenty pound note, gun. Then we'll toss for it. Call. Heads. Heads it is. You're a lucky man. Good evening. Bless your heart. What's it to be this time? More broken pipelines? Nothing so simple. Oil production platforms. Have you any idea how much they cost? Well, millions, I suppose. Hundreds of millions, and there are too many of them in the North Sea. We insure most of them, and the Navy and the Air Force aren't big enough to keep their eyes on them. So, what do you want me to do about it? Work out. What can be done if one of them is hijacked? Oh, don't the armed forces have some ideas on that subject? Undoubtedly, but an oil production platform isn't a building or an aeroplane. It's miles out to sea, and you can't approach it without being seen or heard unless you come from below. Mm, only a, a man of superior intellect is likely to think of a satisfactory way of hijacking a platform or a rig. Exactly. Well, therefore, I must put myself in his position and devise a means of doing so. And having done that, I simply work out how to overpower myself. You think you can? Have I ever let you down? No. I should think not. Your apology is accepted. Now then, nothing is likely to happen, if at all, until spring. The weather's too bad. That gives me five months. Should be ample time. Will Mercia be joining us for dinner? I'm afraid not. Pity. Permission granted. Bring your friends onto the forecastle deck, Herring. There's hot drinks and sandwiches in the mess room. Thank you very much, sir. It's good of you to have us aboard at such short notice. I'm afraid you may be in for a rough trip, gentlemen. The weather forecast is none too good. As you know, we are dropping off some spare parts at the drilling rig before we go on to the production platform. Oh, this is hospitality, Captain. It's just what we needed. Tell Mr. Magnuson we will be casting off in five minutes. Yes, sir. Well, sir, if I could uh, introduce our guests. This is Mr. Lou Bremer, the shipping correspondent of the New York Daily News. Where do you see that? No, that's Kramer, not Bremer. Oh, sorry, Mr. Kramer. <laughs> Typing error. It's not like the New York office to make a mistake like that. Harold Schulman. Boston Globe. Uh, Robert F. Ackerman. Dallas Herald. Howdy. 
Art Web Washington Post. Yes. Mr. Eiji Tanaka and Mr. Suburo Yakamoto of the Tokyo Trade Press. No. no. I I'm afraid I don't know which of you gentlemen is which. But... Yamamoto Tanaka. Welcome aboard, gentlemen. Enjoy your stay. Now, if you'll excuse me, I must uh, return to the bridge. And some spare parts for Jennifer. All right, get it unloaded and hurry. Stand by engines, Mr. Salamo. Stand by engines. Start engines. It's okay. Two of you can visit the wheelhouse now. Let's get to work. Welcome to the wheelhouse, gentlemen. Don't worry that no one is at the wheel. First, Officer Magnuson here will show you how everything works, including the automatic steering. We know all about it, Captain. What the hell is going on here? We're taking command of this ship, Captain. Nobody's going to get hurt if they do exactly what they're told. Now, get over there, you too. He's dead. Well, that was his decision. Get down to the engine room. He's a cake. What? Now move! Nothing of the kind. He is entitled to a decent Christian burial. You want to go with him? before we get to Ruth, Captain. <laughs> In three hours, tell Webb to start operations. <gasps> what do you think they're going to do with us, sir? Well, this is hostage, I suppose. Food we have on board, Sana. Enough for two weeks at least. Do you think we'll be held for that long? Some hijackings have gone on for a month. You can't sit here doing nothing. We do exactly as Captain Olafson orders to do and nothing more. Understand? Check your engines. You had better come too, Olsen. I'll be at the end of the corridor. If anybody sticks their head out, I'll blow it off.
Why don't you tell the skipper what you've been doing for the last couple of hours, Harold? Well, I've been connecting the switch we have here to a bomb we have in the hole. So that any time I want to, I can just blow this ship to kingdom come. Of course, we'll all go up with it, but that's one of the hazards, isn't it? No risk, no gain. This man is an expert with explosives, Captain. He's worked with demolition teams all over the world. So why don't you remind what's left of your crew that unless they're contemplating a premature visit to the great unknown, the spare parts to Ruth will be delivered in the usual way. No problems. No trouble. All right, remember now, you have 30 seconds after you prime the mines before they become live. Touch them after that in your fish food. Up nicely. We are now in a happy position, not only being able to blow ourselves out of the water, but Ruth as well. Don't rub it in, Harold. The captain's got enough on his mind. How long before we reach the production platform? Two hours. That's an incredible piece of work, Lou. Well, she's the biggest ever built, and the most expensive. $2,000 million and 615 personnel producing 300,000 barrels of oil a day. That's a lot of hair cream, isn't it, Skipper? <laughs> what do you want us to do? Anchor in the usual place and unload in the usual way. Haven't you been listening to me? Our agents have bored already. You want to give your crew another warning, Captain? I have already given my orders. Yeah, well, just to make me happy. I am not in the business of making terrorists happy. We're not terrorists, Captain. Terrorists are confused. I don't follow politics of any kind, and I have no philosophies, but I do know what I want.
How much longer, Captain? We are almost finished. That's good. Because we're just about to begin. Get me Mr. King on Jennifer, please, Captain. Yes, the calling Jennifer. Yes, Olufsen. I'm only going to go over this once, Mr. King, so we just double check that your tape recorder is functioning properly, please. Who is this? Well, my name is Lou Kramer, but don't bother having it run through the computers because I lifted it out of the Manhattan phone book and you guys are going to have plenty to do without wasting your time on non-essential activities. May I speak to Captain Olufsen, please? I am the temporary captain of this tub and you're going to be taking your orders from me for the time being. And the quicker you get it straight, the shorter that time is going to be. So let's just play patty cake together and get this over with. Remember, luck favors the man with the most limpid minds, and I've got a bundle of them. Two stuck to the underside of the drilling rig, Ruth, and four planted right under your ass on Jennifer. Do I still have your attention, King? Just, uh, what is it you want? We want the British government, which is listed as the primary stockholder in both Ruth and Jennifer, to pay us a ransom of 25 million pounds in five different currencies. Pound sterling, US dollars, Japanese yen, Swiss francs, and German marks. The money market is so unstable these days. Have you got that? Yes, I've got it. Is there anything else? They have 24 hours until 9 o'clock tomorrow night to produce the cash. If they don't deliver it on time, we will blow up Ruth. Then they get another four hours to think again. If we still don't have the money, down goes Jennifer, all $2,000 million of her. All right, Kramer. I'll pass on your request to the authorities. Well, you can pass it on to anyone you like, but remember, if anyone takes any action against us, everything goes up immediately. Ruth, Jennifer, and every damn person on board them. Are you still there, King? Yes, I'm still here. Well, get to work. When you've got some news, give us a call. We're not going out this evening. How do you react? Good night. Lord Privy Seal's office. Mr. Tipping. Lord Privy Seal here. What is it? Good God. Get me the Prime Minister in the evening. Yes, Fernley. Yes. Who are Lord they? Privy what action Seal, do you take? Lord the Prime Minister's office. I took the liberty of briefing one or two of those concerned. Please be seated, if you wish. I need a whiskey, Edward. I read your resume on the way over. What sort of security do we have that this kind of thing can happen? Keeping the North Sea secure is like trying to keep a cornfield free of vermin, Prime Minister. You obviously have plans for dealing with a situation like this. We have Royal Marine Commandos and SAS units to deal with most kinds of hijacking. But there's not much we can do when there's a maniac on a ship at sea waiting to push a button the moment he sniffs danger. We can't even get in close without him either seeing or hearing us. That production platform is the biggest ever built. It produces 300,000 barrels of oil a day. Renewing it at today's prices would be in the region of 15,000 million pounds. My God, that's a quarter of the defense budget. And that does not include the loss in oil revenue cost of the drilling rig and supply ship, nor the damage by pollution to the coastlines and the fishing industry. From the purely financial point of view, I'm afraid it would be better to accept their terms. Out of the question. It's not only the maritime economy that will suffer, it would also prove a disaster to Lloyd's. They're covering the insurance? Every penny. You seem to have something on your mind, Dennis. 
Well, while the government could not be seen to be paying off terrorists, perhaps we could turn a blind eye if Lloyd's did. Prime Minister's office. Uh, apart from the financial point of view, there are 697 people involved, mostly British and American. That had crossed my mind. We could evacuate the 71 men from Ruth. It's too far away for Esther to see anything. Who is Ruth? It's a drilling rig. It's serviced by Jennifer. Uh, Jennifer is the production platform that uh, Sir Edward was talking about. Do that. What? Evacuate Ruth. Yes, Prime Minister. Yes, I see. Yes? A Norwegian fishing boat has just picked up the dead body of the first officer of the supply ship Esther. He'd been shot. I want a news blackout on all of this. Put out a D-notice. I'll talk to the editors later and explain what's happened. Yes, Prime Minister. It's an attractive idea to let Lloyds do our work for us. I do not propose to allow a group of murderers to hold the British nation to ransom. Even so, Prime Minister, there's no reason not to ask Lloyds to give us all the help they can. I believe they have their own negotiating team and uh, other means of help. Well? Talk to them. Pick their brains. Meanwhile, I want to know what the service chiefs are doing and the commissioner of police. And I want to know if any of those wells can be sealed. Good night. Sexy Santa around? Hey, uh, you look as good in the morning as you do at night. We should have breakfast together sometime. What do you want? Shut up. I wasn't talking to you. They want breakfast up on the bridge. When it's ready. Now. When it's ready. We're gonna get along fine. You gonna die on us? Mm, probably. What sort of poisons do we have in the hospital? Morphia, colchicine. But only the captain has the key to that cupboard. Will he let you have it? I don't think he would agree to it. Would you? When I can see him, I'll ask him. Exercise completed. To the second. Harris! You can turn that camera off now. Thank you very much, Mr. Fletcher. No, the men acting as sailors on the boat were Folks's men, too, I take. No, they were members of a local judo club. They had been trained to expect trouble and to resist without restraint. They'd been on board for 12 hours when the attack came. Thank you. If you'll be good enough to wait in Mr. Shaw's office. Uh, this way, if you please. It might work, but night. The uncanny thing is that this was shot over a month ago. He anticipated that an attempt might be made by some kind of supply ship, and he worked out a method to take it. What do you think, Admiral? Personally, I don't care for the idea of civilians attempting an operation which should be conducted by the Royal Navy. Well, do you have a unit that prepared? Not at the moment, but in our budget, it wouldn't allow for it. As defense minister, Mr. Dorney, what do you think? 
The men are superbly trained. But what do we know about their morale under actual fire? How much determination have they? Well, they've all had military service. They're all ex-Navy or commander. I still don't like it. If just one of them were to be seen... Well, that's the risk with any kind of operation against terrorists. What time is it? 9 a.m. Only 12 hours left. What did you say this man's name was, Dennis? Oh, folks, Prime Minister. Two small Fs. Rufus Excalibur, folks. I've taken the liberty of putting him on alert. Oh, just in case. Stand by, Rainbow. Four, three, two, go! <whistles> Harris, man standing forward, you see him? Yes, sir. Right through to the bow. Doors on aft. Yes, sir. Harris. Why have you clean to the bow, sir? Four, three, two, go! <whistles> Harris, man standing on ladder from Foxhall. You see him? Oh, it's him, sir. Go! hundred people relying on us to save their lives. And you, sir, you whack that ladder as it's a dinner gong. Do it again, I'll have your balls for breakfast. Now, back to number one. Go! Move! Let's hope that his crew is more seaworthy than his boat. No, don't worry, sir. I've seen them work at sea often. They know how to handle themselves. If he keeps them at it like this, they'll be worn out before they get there. He's an odd fellow, Admiral. But he believes in preparation, and by the time I arrived, he'd had that mock-up built from photographs someone at Lloyd's supplied. And they'd already started working on their plan. Well, you've got to admire his professionalism, even if he isn't a regular. Yes, sir. And deducing it would be a supply ship in the first place. Well, he's either a, a genius or incredibly lucky. I hope that he's both. Gentlemen, we will take a break. Back in 40 minutes. How are we doing, sir? Like plowmen at a bloody knitting convention. We're improving, then. <laughs> now, this is Mr. Folks, Admiral. Rufus, Admiral of the Fleet, Sir Francis Brinston. Admiral? Harry tells me that you hope to get your men to the wheelhouse unobserved. I don't hope anything. If I say I will get my men to the wheelhouse unobserved, I will do so. I was telling the Admiral your uh, men are so well drilled, they'll be able to find their way around Esther with their eyes shut. If any one of my men moves around anything with his eyes shut, I shall personally gouge them out. It's time for a drink. A bit early, isn't it? It's four hours since breakfast. That's late. We'll use your car. Harris, this is Admiral Brinson. You know Captain Phillips? Have a seat, Admiral. We drink scotch here the way it should be drunk. Neat. Have any idea how many villains are on board? None. Well, apart from a couple of stun grenades, we shall only use knives and a special harpoon gun on this outing. Harris, show the apple. Except for a slight squelch when entering the flesh, they do not make any noise. Unless they hit bone. But that won't happen. My men know their way around a man's anatomy. This is Mary. I like cats. I don't like people who don't. Uh, well, now, um, 
And to complete the operation we've just seen, uh, what happens when your men reach the wheelhouse? It's a matter of timing. My men, while you create a diversion, will surround the wheelhouse. Harris will toss in the stun grenades. And at the same moment, I shall kill the man nearest the remote control switch. I go aboard, Esther. We both do. You in your official capacity, and I as your flag lieutenant. And what makes you think that they'll allow us aboard? We shall offer ourselves as additional hostages when they begin to get nervous. And I shall see that they do get nervous. Cheers. Westerly, five or six, showers, good. Lundy. Westerly, backing southwesterly, five or six, locally, gale eight at first. Showers, mainly good. Fast eight, southwest. Would you like some lunch, sir? Thank you, Sala. Kramer wants you. Tell him I'll be with him in a moment. He wants you now. Jennifer, I want to talk to King. That's the calling, Jennifer. Mr. King, please. Don't you want me, Lou? Yeah. I don't like it that we still haven't made the news. Do you think they understand what will happen if they interfere with the mines we've planted? Well, they'll find out soon enough if they try anything. Mr. King's on the line. Time check, Mr. King. What's going on? We're doing our best, Mr. Kramer. There is no best. You've got eight hours and five minutes before Ruth goes to the bottom. Everybody's aware of the time period, Mr. Kramer. Now, I've been instructed to tell you the Admiral of the Fleet, Sir Francis Brinsden, has been asked by the Prime Minister to negotiate with you. There is nothing to negotiate. Oh, really? Then how are we supposed to get the ransom to you? I'll tell you when I'm ready. Now, put the Admiral on. He's not here yet. He's flying over from Aberdeen. I didn't give anyone permission to land on Jennifer. Well, it's going to be extremely difficult to get any money to you unless you do. Do we get permission for him to land or not? All right, he can land, but no planes within a mile of this ship, do you understand? And we'll be monitoring the radio. Fair on. Northwesterly 6 to Gale 8. I'm late. Are we ready for takeoff? I'll give you the PM's instructions on the flight. As soon as Folks arrives, he insisted on collecting his own uniform. What's he like? Very odd. He's got enough chips on his shoulder to sink a battleship. On the other hand, I suspect that you picked the right man for the job. Lord Privy Seal, Mr. Tipping, folks. 
He's not coming with us, is he? He is indeed. He has instructions for me, and I dare say for you too, from the Prime Minister. Hope there's room for all of us. Otherwise, one of you two will have to sit on the floor. Brief from the PM. Uh, thank you. No, oh, thank you. No, thank you. Folks, how long have you been working on that? 17 years. I'm in no hurry to finish it. You find plenty of power relaxing. Extremely boring. But it helps me think, provided people don't talk to me. We're coming up on roof. Yes, roofs. Should have been evacuated by now. Soon be sending down our naval divers to try to defuse the mines. That's a damn silly thing to do. That's hardly your business, folks. Why did you say that? Any explosive man worth his salt would have arranged for the mines to explode the moment they're disturbed. And up or rather down will go roof. The naval bomb disposal divers are experts, too. Would you care to discuss the survival statistics of bomb disposal experts, naval or otherwise? It's immaterial to Mr. Kramer whether Ruth goes up this afternoon or tonight. Either way, it makes their case for us paying up to save Jennifer stronger than ever. He has a point. like to listen to the weather forecast. There is a storm coming up. If you know there's a storm coming up, what do you have to listen to it on the radio for? Because if it's severe, we may have to turn into the wind and ride it out. OK, turn the radio on for him, Harold. Where are Reggie and Saburo? They're guarding the crew. How about Webb and Ackerman? Asleep. Now the shipping forecast issued by the meteorological office I would like the engineer up here to help me change position. Okay, go get him. Hey, straight arrow. No funny business. You better go with him. No Spain, one thousand and five. Change little. Hey! Oh, it's okay. Kramer, give us permission for the crew to go to work. Go on. I go to change position. Put on your oil skins and get forward. Dalmo, you and Olsen stand by the engines. Fido, you come with me. And don't any of you try to be heroes. Understand? like the key to the poison cupboard.
start engines. Start engines. This is good news or bad? I don't know. He's on the phone. May I? No, you may not. I didn't know they had females aboard these things. Just eight of us. Things are improving that way. A gigantic step backwards. This is King speaking. I want that chopper to stay where it is. Nobody is to leave Jennifer without my permission. Yes, understood. Now, who exactly arrived on it? Admiral Brinsden and his flag lieutenant. No one else? Nobody else, Kramer. I'm sure the Admiral will be in touch with you shortly. I'm sure he will, unless he's come to lead you in a chorus of God Save the Queen as Jennifer sinks in about 40 fathoms of the North Sea. But what's his hurry? He's still got six hours and 18 minutes to play with. He's a real charmer. Paranoid, momentarily drunk with power and reveling in it. Don't talk to him for an hour, Admiral. Why not? His suggestion that there is no hurry is the exact opposite to what he feels. He is bursting to know our reaction to his threats. And what are we supposed to do for the next hour? Think, Admiral. Think. Hmm. If they want to play games, let them. When Ruth goes up, they'll know we're not kidding. Lose your car keys, Captain. My pipe. Hire doll, get it for me, please. In my cabin, second row down. With your permission, Mr. Kramer. Go ahead. Just getting the captain's pipe, sir. Mr. Kramer gave his permission. Kramer, I'm putting you on to Admiral Sir Francis Brinsden. Hello, Admiral. Just so long as we get off on the right foot. Have you got the money with you? No, that wasn't possible. Oh, but we are gathering your money, Kramer. You've no need to worry. Get this. I'm not worried. Do you have any idea how difficult it is to get together 25 million pounds in foreign currency in 24 hours? I don't believe you have the remotest idea how banks work. You're entirely wrong. I've researched this thoroughly. I have to ask permission for my helicopter to fly back to the mainland. If you haven't got the money, why did you bring it out here in the first place? I had to verify the nature of the emergency. Can the helicopter leave, Jennifer? In this storm? Why? To bring you your money, Kramer. Okay, your thinking's right, Admiral, but storm or no storm, that money comes in on schedule or down goes Ruth. Do you understand? 
Even if it can be arranged, you must accept that... It's not going to be easy to transfer it in this weather. You'll just have to let me... You can rattle on like this till doomsday, but my schedule remains the same. No money by 9 o'clock tonight. Goodbye, Ruth. No money by 1 o'clock in the morning. Goodbye, Jennifer. And that's it! There's no way we can make the first deadline. The ransom can't be ready until 10 o'clock at the earliest, and we'll be lucky if we have it by 11. Then why let the chopper take off in the storm? I want Kramer to think we're doing all we can to meet his demands. There are two other reasons. First, the Admiral has an order to be transmitted to his staff. And what order? To blow up Ruth. Why on earth? You... Or since they cannot see her, make them think that some bungling naval bomb disposal officer has done so. What, what will that achieve? Would have thought that was obvious. If they think Ruth has gone, they're hardly likely to try and blow her up themselves. He may press the button anyway. Now, that is a chance we have to take. I suggest a nice big explosion shortly after dark, followed by a fire to light up the sky for miles around. I'll lay it on immediately. Now, what's the second reason? Uh, since the helicopter brought three people here, there's no reason why it shouldn't take three people back, providing we can get them aboard unseen. Ah, uh, yes. But which three? Well, there are eight women aboard. Nonsense. If women want equality in life, they must also accept it in death. Don't you agree? Of course. Then take the three youngest, regardless of sex. The old have had their chances. Coffee? Oh, thank you, very civilized. Put it down, then. Nothing's gonna happen for a couple of hours. Why don't you lay your head down? No, I'm gonna go to the bathroom. I'm gonna try to go to the bathroom. Lou, there it is. On your little buttons, Harold. Yeah, well. Well, there's nobody up here we can't live without. What do you want? He's here to relieve Heyerdahl. Is one of our guys on guard downstairs? Yeah, stop worrying. Nobody's gone any place. If any one of me farts in the wrong key, he'll end up with his brains all over the floor. Go ahead. Fire it off. Tell Sano to start the dinner. Now. You'd like to eat, I presume? That better be the last thing you presume, Captain Courageous. <laughs> the captain says it's time to eat. going to get it. I'm the only person who can get into the hospital without attracting attention. Anybody who's sick can go to the hospital. I'm sick. You sure you're up to it? If you must know it, I'd welcome the chance of being caught and put out in my misery. Nobody gets that sick. Don't you believe it? Culture scene? We are grateful to you, Mr. Harry. I have to go to the hospital. Get something for this seasickness. I didn't think he had that much courage. I don't know why he did it. I do. He's one of them. We've got to stop him. No. Just follow me. Come on, Peter. You've got to help. 
with everybody eating, I've got to get more supplies. I can't be expected to do all the work by myself. Genuine, those guys would never have got on board as reporters. You better get back. Tell the guard I'll be along with the supplies. Feeling better? Much better. I haven't heard anything from the BBC. Service with a smile. Just put it right down there, darling. It's about time, too. Wait for us, fellas. You've uh, had your dinner, have you? Yeah. Was it good? Fine. How about having a cup of coffee with us, just to show there's no hard feelings? No, thanks. We've already had some. Two coffees, Harold. Huh? This one's for blue eyes. Sugar? Well, drink it. Drink it! full of poison and then laugh while we rolled around and died? Is that what you were gonna do? Was it? Let him go. Over the side after his girlfriend. That's a nasty cut you got there. <laughs>
is the bad time. I wish I had sailed. It's for you, sir. It's in a code. The girl who follows the law comes of age an hour early tonight. What does that mean? In the Old Testament, Ruth follows judges. Coming of age is 21. Tonight means tonight. In other words, the Navy will simulate the blowing up of Ruth at one hour before 21 hours tonight. I suppose you're one of those fellows who does the Times crossroad puzzle in 10 minutes. I have never taken 10 minutes. You guys really believe in living dangerously, don't you? Watch your nose. This is Admiral Brinston. I'm Sonny Kramer, but the Prime Minister has instructed me to tell you that um, there's absolutely no possibility of getting the ransom to you before 11. She hopes to have it ready shortly after that. Under these circumstances, I have to ask you to reconsider your decision to blow up Ruth at 9 o'clock. No deal. We are not stalling. If you wait, eight seconds to go. Listen, Admiral, if the Prime Minister went on the air and announced that she was going to hand us the money personally, cross her heart, hope to die, and kiss my ass in Parliament Square, the answer would still be no! You must reconsider, Kramer. Don't you realize? They must be playing with one of my minds. I warned them. Admiral, we... He hung up. I can't say I blame him. Did he buy it? I hope. I hope. There's too many people up here. Webb, Ackham, take those two below. Sure is pretty. If they don't get a call into Red Adair, it could burn for a year. Get me the Admiral on the buzzer. It's the calling, Jennifer. Admiral? This is Admiral Brinson's flag lieutenant speaking. The Admiral is not available. Then make him available. That is not possible. 82 crew and six naval divers wound up with Ruth. He is extremely distressed. He should be. He blew it, not me. Get this, Lieutenant. We've got nothing to lose. Now have the money here on time or the whole North Sea will be on fire. You think it worked? Don't let's do any chicken counting. We can still press that button intentionally or unintentionally. What's the next move? I would suggest ringing him every half hour to make sure that he doesn't get any sleep. In the meantime, Admiral, I must teach you how to make a small diversion look perfectly natural. Uh -oh. Cigarette Kramer? Looks simple, doesn't it? But to do it naturally in 10 seconds flat takes a lot of practice, especially as you have to bend down two minutes after my men are boarded the Esther. In other words, at 0040, you will say, Cigarette Kramer. And I shall expect him to be watching you bend down to retrieve your cigarettes when I kill him ten seconds later. At the same moment, my man Harris will fling in two stun grenades, which will go off with a very loud bang indeed by the time you've recovered from that. Kramer and his odious colleagues will be dead or disabled. Clear? Zero, zero, 0040. It's cutting it rather fine, isn't it? The closer we are to his deadline, the more jittery he will become and the more careless. I think something goes wrong. Cigarette creamer. <clears throat> Nothing will go wrong. All right, go tell the others we found him. And tell A.G. nobody leaves that mess room again without my permission. What happened? Well, they jumped me. I was coming to warn you. To poison you. Well, they tried that. They're overboard. Who was in on it? 
I'm getting worried about you, Herring. And that's not a good sign. And you get your ass outside and keep your eyes open. Do it. Okay, Lou. Lou, wait a minute. You said you were uh, saving the escape plan to the last minute. This feels like the last minute to me. Where do you want to go, Harold? Admiral, I think you should call him now. Why? I want him to be busy at 2100 hours. Ah. If it hadn't already happened, in exactly 12 seconds, I'd be doing this. This is Admiral Princeton. Your ransom will be delivered to Jennifer at approximately 0040 hours tomorrow morning. You said it would be ready at 11. It's a miracle that we've got it at all. We're doing our best. You make it sound like it's coming out of you and the Queen's joint bank account, Admiral. I like that. We shall have to winch it down from the helicopter to you. Really? Well, while we're waiting, I want you and King and your Lieutenant Flag, or whatever his name is, to come over here as my guests. You're looking for additional hostages? No, but it has occurred to us that you might try to booby-trap the ransom and blow us all to pieces. No, I'm afraid that thought didn't occur to us. Well, don't worry about it. It would have. So we'll see you at 11, Admiral. And incidentally, one of the buttons I've got in front of me detonates a bomb in this ship. You try to turn your visit into a Comanche raiding party, and we'll all go down together. Your guys, our guys, and Jennifer, of course. Well, at least it saves us having to talk our way on board. We still have to talk our way to the bridge at the critical moment. I don't like him changing my plans. Mr. King, do you suppose you could ask your secretary to confirm that my men are put to sea as show children? This is Admiral Brinston, requesting permission to take off. Of course you can take off. How the hell are you going to get here if you don't? And Brinston, be smart. Don't bring any hardware with you. They're coming in. Be on deck and search them. happens to me, I'd appreciate it if you'd give this to my wife. Uh, Admiral, I presume you want your family to know that you've gone voluntarily. No, I don't. Sybil would give me hell if she thought I'd volunteered or anything. <laughs> but you might, um, give her that if we don't come back. Of course you'll come back. You will both come back. Now, at 0032 hours, that is 32 minutes past midnight precisely, you will call Kramer and tell him that you wish to speak to each of us in turn to make sure we are well and unharmed. Otherwise, no ransom will be paid. Have you got that? Yes, sir. Huh? 0032 hours. Splendid. Now, since our lives will depend upon it, I suggest that we synchronize our watches. The correct time, 10 seconds from now, will be 11.14. Five. Four, three, two, one, set.
coming in. You're on your own, Harold. One false move and I'll blow your ears off. Mr. Kramer, glad to have you out, our little clan bank, Admiral. But if you're not an expendable statistic in the British Navy, the next visitor we have better be carrying that 25 million in loose change. I told you, it will be here 40 minutes past midnight. I know you told me. I don't like you, Flag. How fortunate. My instinct tells me you're bad news. Did you search him, Webb? I could tell you the size of his underwear. AJ, you and Saburo take the Admiral and King to the front cabin and lock him in. Ackerman! Tell Harold to call the helicopter. One guy's going back. I want my flag lieutenant with me. You invited him, Mr. Kramer. I changed my mind. Go on. You'd better take that pussycat grin off your face or this guy's liable to carve it off. I go back with him. You don't need me anymore. I'm not cut out for this, Lou. You can split my share. Webb, wait for Terry. You did your part. I got you on board. You got us on board. Go ahead. Good luck to you. I'll tell him. They've called a helicopter back. The pilot says there was shooting. He thinks someone's been killed. Going down to the flight deck. I know I was right about that guy. They may try something. Put Angie and Saburo on the main deck. You and Webb, keep moving around. He 
didn't like my face. But what about the plan? You're supposed to be there. I know, Mr. Tipping, I know. I thought you knew the answer to everything, Mr. Folks. How typical of a woman to make a remark like that at a time like this. Do you have to smoke? Yes. Yes? It's the Prime Minister's private secretary. They want to know if everything is going as planned. Tell him to put the Prime Minister on. Mr. Folks would like to speak to the Prime Minister. Prime Minister, a change of plans has been forced upon us. If anything should go wrong, we must blow up the Esther and all on board her. You're asking me to order the deaths of an innocent crew. I am telling you how to save the lives of 600 men, and incidentally, the economic life of Great Britain. I think it would be better to pay the ransom. We have the money collected now. No, madam, you must not do that. If you do not stand firm on this issue, then you'll simply encourage every villain with a, with a rowing boat to hold this country to ransom again. If we come to that decision, how do you propose we carry it out? Are you recording this? I want you to get it straight. The helicopter must arrive at the Esther as scheduled at 0040 hours precisely. That is 40 minutes past midnight. But I want her to be carrying a bomb. Now, if I fire a very light at 0041, everything will be all right. If not, the bomb must be dropped immediately, and I repeat, immediately. All right, Mr. Folks. It will be done as you request. Thank you, ma'am. A wise decision, I assure you. Mr. Folks, how many crew are on the Esther? The insurance company log states 11. But Admiral Brinson, Mr. King, and I will be on board at the fatal moment. Good luck to you, Mr. Folks. Thank you, madam. She seems to have some grasp. Get on to the diving section. Tell them I want a wetsuit and a berry gun. Then get on to security and tell them I want a 45 automatic as quickly as possible. And not a hint of what is happening. You really don't like women, do you? I do not. You see, I, together with my five elder sisters, was raised by a maiden aunt. Both my parents died tragically in childbirth. Until the age of 10, I was forced to wear my sister's hand-me-downs. Then, when I married, I discovered to my horror that my wife also had five sisters, all unmarried, and all expecting my support. I find cats a far superior breed. Just on the off chance I have made a will, I've left everything to my cats. I want it testified that I am sound of body and mind. Well, go on! me Jennifer. Esther calling Jennifer. If they're gonna throw anything at us, it'll be between now and when the money arrives. Hey, Flag. I'll get him for you. A wetsuit in vermilion, just what one needs at night. Yes, Kramer. The look in your eyes is still bothering me, Flag. I thought I'd remind you that if the British Navy or anyone else should start acting cute, Nobody is going to try anything. 
none of us particularly wants to die, so I suggest we leave each other alone until the ransom arrives. Time is short, so it should not be too much of a strain on any of us. Yeah, let's do that. I don't like the sound of your voice, either. Trouble? Isn't there some way we can notify your men? Only by radio. And if they pick it up on Esther, we'll all be dead before the message is completed. I'm freezing my nuts off. What do you say I go get some coffee? Okay, only make it quick.
cold enough to freeze the ass off a polar bear up here. At least we're out of the wind on this side. Hello? This is Jennifer calling Esther. Hello? Hello, this is Jennifer calling Esther. Oh my God, what's happening? He's dead. Hello? Well, keep trying. Hello, this is Jennifer calling Esther. Come in, Esther. She should have called by now. Bridge. This is Admiral Brinson. We want to speak to Kramer. What do you want, Admiral? Before the ransom arrives, I have to speak to Jennifer to assure them of Mr. King's and my well-being. Really? And what if I say you're not going to speak to anyone? What do you want, Kramer? Your ransom or a disaster? It was agreed that if there was no signal from us, the ransom would not be paid. Well, bring the Admiral and King up here. Hold this. Come on, Kramer, watch it. Give me Jennifer. That's the calling Jennifer. That's the calling Jennifer. Come in, Jennifer. I can't get through. Well, keep trying. You stay here. I'll take the lower ground. Thanks, boy. Girl. Look like a boy. You act like a boy. Okay, I'm a boy. I was hiding in the lifeboat. Comes to slug it. Keep out of the way. Jennifer. No tricks. Brinston speaking. Brinston, everything is to go as planned. Everything. Yes, I understand. Everything as planned. Get ready. I can't see it. But you can hear it, Harold. In a minute, we're going to be millionaires. As planned. Right, Admiral? Or...
What's that? A cigarette, Kramer? You already give those up, then. Oh. Jennifer, folks here. You can tell the Lord Privy Seal the operation has been completed. As planned. Naturally. Well, I suppose things could have been worse. Cooper, get below and release the crew. Tell them it's all over. You two come with me. Don't bother with that. Oh, that feels wonderful. Oh. Yeah, turn around. My God, you are a girl. Even so, a lot of people owe you a great deal. And so do I. I'm here to greet and thank you on behalf of Her Majesty's government. I'd rather you didn't. Nevertheless, wonderful job, perfectly executed. And it's fitting that you should receive some memento of our gratitude. I'm uh, told you do not approve of medals and other awards. Damn lot of nonsense. Therefore, we have chosen something we hope you may approve of.
Esther, Ruth, and Jennifer, with the grateful thanks of the nation. Very thoughtful. Much appreciated. Well, if you'll excuse me, Mrs. Um, Prime Minister, I think they'd like a saucer of milk. <laughs> <laughs>